remember the days of food branded Doom clones or weirdly competent racing games with familiar tiger tie-ins? Do you remember endangering a child on the site of an active volcano or performing an operation on an unsettling happy clown? <laughs> I guess what we're really asking here is, do you remember the sugary sweet fever dream that was the era of cereal box video games? If so, then you might be curious, as we were, to find out what the hell happened to them. Before we really sink our teeth into this, be sure to subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming if you're into content like this. Now sit back, grab a bowl, and enjoy today's video as part of a balanced breakfast. Back in the days when video game boxes came with physical discs instead of download codes, you could root around in the bargain bin of your local pawn shop and reliably find a bunch of shovelware that companies were just trying to offload onto unsuspecting kids. But every once in a while, you'd find a diamond in the rough, something actually worth playing that was buried under the piles of trash. And it was made all the more exciting because you went rummaging around for it with your grubby little kid hands. Now imagine that feeling tenfold when you find something worth playing buried in the box of your favorite breakfast cereal. In the mid 90s, the trend of including prizes in cereal boxes was already well established. Kids had been targeted with the promise of trinkets for decades, be they books, stickers, or tiny plastic toys. And they worked. Turns out kids love the combination of food and entertainment. Who would have thought? But times were changing. Your average middle-class family had a computer in their living room and a Nintendo 64 hooked up to the TV. Stickers and choking hazards weren't gonna cut it anymore. If companies wanted to continue selling cereal to children, they had to adapt to a technologically advancing market. And what better way to relate to kids than by copying someone's homework? Hey man, can I copy your homework? Huh? Can I copy your homework? No, you can't copy my homework! No. There is in the this is where 1996's Chex Quest comes in. The first and by far the most popular cereal box game ever created, Chex Quest is, well, it's Doom. It's literally just a conversion of Doom with some Chex branding and generic goo monster assets slapped on top. Developed by Digital Cafe and published under the General Mills Food Processing Company, Chex Quest should have been a failure by all rights. The idea of a company like General Mills hiring an unknown developer to make a Doom ripoff based on their mid-tier cereal sounds like an awful idea on paper. But you probably already know that Chex Quest is actually awesome. That's mostly because Doom is awesome, so we have id Software to thank for that. But Chex Quest had its own flavor of charm. It was an idea that, according to the lead artist, came about because he and some other devs had made Doom mods in the past. And when General Mills came to them for a cheap and quickly made project, it seemed like a perfect fit. Intending to appeal to a younger audience, you didn't actually kill any of the green phlemoids on screen. And I mean, how could you? Your melee weapon was a spoon. Instead, you zorched them back to their own dimension. If they hit you, they left a little splatter of green alien slime on your character rather than any M-rated blood. It was all very tongue in cheek and fun. And most importantly, it did its job. Chex Quest apparently increased Chex cereal sales by nearly 250%. And if that wasn't good enough, it also won several awards for its advertising effectiveness. The game would go on to spawn sequels, an HD remake, and lots and lots of copycats looking to lap up some of that sweet marketing money. And so the cereal box video game era began in earnest. The scene exploded in popularity seemingly overnight. Where were these games coming from? Who was actually making them? Consumers didn't know. All we knew, and all that mattered at the time, was that we could get free games if we bought specially marked boxes of cereal. Some of them were directly tied to the cereal they came in, others were cross-promoting board games or movies, and some were just plain weird. But they were all imbued with the same sort of magical feeling one where even the most banal title felt fun and exciting when you excavated it out of your Cheerios and booted it up on the family PC. There was one bizarre subgenre of game that was just a landing page for printable stationery and coloring books. But even Winnie the Pooh Print Studio had its charm. We made our mom so many birthday cards on that thing. And though it's true that cereal box video games weren't exactly packed full of originality, there were a few titles that stood out on the supermarket shelves. I smell you, Pumbaa. Timon and Pumbaa's Jungle Games was a sort of consolation prize for kids whose parents wouldn't buy them the real Lion King game on the Genesis. As was the case with a lot of these cereal box titles, it was basically just a landing page with a collection of moderately fun mini games. 
like the burper game, where Timon does this the whole time. Good job, Timon. Keep at it, buddy. Tonka's search and rescue was certainly more than just a cash grab. With an overflow of gameplay elements ranging from questionable vehicle customization to click on the plunger and blow up the rocks. Animal endangerment. But the little 2D animated workers really added to the personality of the whole thing. Captain Crunch's Crunchling Adventure was another classic, and arguably one of the higher effort titles we saw during this time period. There's a character creator, a weirdly long exposition-filled prologue rendered in ancient 3D. What have become of my friends, the Crunchlings? They had helped me build the Crunchium Collector, which keeps the pipeline flowing so that we can all enjoy Cabin Crunch cereal. Quite a bit of voice acting on the part of the captain, and there's even an endgame cutscene with a full-on sequel tease. Clearly, Marvel movies have been taking inspiration from this cinematic masterpiece. You also had your Scrabbles, your Monopoly Juniors, and your Candylands, the last of which had the most ridiculously sincere opening theme song ever created. And of course, while neither were specifically made for cereal companies, both Roller Coaster Tycoon and Age of Empires were also included in boxes. Basically, because of the success of one simple Doom clone, the cereal aisle had become saturated in video games by the early 2000s, and kids were gobbling it up, suggested serving sizes be damned. But it turns out you can have too much of a good thing. Obviously, we don't see a whole lot of video games in cereal boxes anymore. At most, you'll get like a download code for a Minecraft cosmetic or something. So if the marketing strategy was so lucrative, why did they stop? Well, there isn't really a definitive answer. More likely, it was a combination of factors that killed this golden gram era in gaming. As with most fun things, hyper-popularity definitely played a part in the downfall of cereal box video games. When practically every cereal aimed at kids boasted some kind of game inside its box, the excitement for the once novel concept began to fade. Add to that just how popular PC gaming had become in the 2000s, and companies were finding it difficult to compete. Actual big budget games were increasingly easier to get a hold of, and no kid in their right mind was going to trade in their copy of Max Payne for Stuart Little 2. There was also the heat coming from the FTC, which has been fighting a battle against commercials and children's cartoons for decades. By the time the 2000s rolled around, the government was cracking down on just how aggressively you could market to children on TV, and that no doubt caused a bit of a ripple effect for the cereal companies. And perhaps the biggest and most deadly factor for the downfall of cereal box games was the hardware they depended on. Time has not been kind to the existence of compact discs. Even if you wanted to go through the trouble of jumping through hoops to get your copy of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire running, most modern PC towers don't even have disc drives. And honestly, we wouldn't recommend trying it anyway. Regis Philbin is just gonna make fun of you for playing by yourself. All alone, huh? Okay, just me and you, no problem here. But let's get real for a second here. We've had a lot of fun bullying these games in this video, and that's because they're easy targets. They were low-budget projects made to entice kids into buying cheap boxes of grains and sugar. And it's probably a good thing that they don't really exist anymore. But it's clear that there was some level of love and care that went into at least a handful of these titles. That puts a sort of sad spin on the fact that most of these games are just abandonware now, and we know very little about the people who made them. For the most part, cereal box games were developed by barely known or totally unknown studios with one or two titles to their name. There's nothing to be found online about them otherwise. Except for the devs behind games that were retroactively added to cereal boxes like Roller Coaster Tycoon and the dudes at Digital Cafe who will always be remembered as the creators of Chex Quest. But that's pretty much it, since they didn't do much else of note afterwards. The identities of the people behind these original creations are mostly lost to time just as forgotten as the CDs their work was copied onto. In some ways, this adds to the mystique surrounding the games. It's kind of fun to imagine that they popped into existence in their fully formed, totally unhinged states. But that also erases the potential legacy of these people who were hired for cheap and probably overworked on tight deadlines under massive names like Hasbro, Kellogg's, General Mills, and Disney. We may not know who they are, and we may never know. But at least we know their games. And maybe the fond memories we all have for these titles is legacy enough. Well, that's it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, make sure to subscribe to Nerdstalgic Gaming and hit the thumbs up for more content just like this. We'll have a new video out soon. But in the meantime, let us know down below. What's your favorite game you ever pulled out of a cereal box?